Sounds All good. Right. All right. What's going on, everybody? You're tuning into another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast with your host, Leezy the Gifted. And I am super pumped for today's guest. I think we're going to have a lot of gems about digital marketing. I'm actually really excited about how we connected. I actually found my guest on TikTok just from seeing his videos pop up on my For You page and me as an artist producer being genuinely interested in the subject that my guest is talking about. So please help me in welcoming Anthony Pacheco. Anthony, what is up, my friend? How are you? Uh, doing well in this new post-apocalyptic, you know, age that we're living in, but yeah. you know, I'm alive. What can I say? <laughs> yeah. And so your brand is called Oddly Simple. Is that right? Uh, it's called Simple, but that domain was taken. So I had to like, you know, come up with something else. So I, I yeah. it like ties into the whole branding, like marketing is oddly simple. I don't know. Right. No, I love it. I love it. So talk, yeah, talk about like, I want to get a little bit of background. Um, first of all, honestly, I'm actually just like genuinely excited to talk to you because I've literally seen your videos like a lot. I've saved your videos. I've gone on your profile and I'm like, I bet he's got an Instagram. Like, I am bet I could connect with him. And just the fact that we get to like, just chat is I'm, I'm, I'm actually like really excited. So anyway, so a little starstruck, right? Like <laughs> talk, talk about like where, like how kind of you grew up and like take me through your journey of how you got to the point you're at right now. Yeah. Um, my story is nothing, you know, super crazy or phenomenal. I like to call it. I'm, I'm like a humble person across the board, thankfully. Um, but I live in a town called Modesto, California, which is oddly enough, really close to you. You're from Walnut Creek, right? Yeah. Cool. But, uh, yeah, that, that's where I grew up and I'm still here. Um, you know, a, a lot of people are under the impression like, oh, to make it in music, whatever that means to you, you have to be in like a big city like LA, Nashville, New York, et cetera. But I mean, I don't, I'm happy you know, and that's me making it, you know, that that is what making it is to me happiness. And I can thankfully say that, yeah, I am happy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I started off playing music, a lot of music, like in, in bands since I was like 16, and um, burnt through a lot of money. And like, it, it's one thing and just how the music industry is shaped right now, you you sort of think, okay, you have to have really good music and then the people will come. Or if I have the right song, the right people will come to me and, and check me out. But that's really not the case, especially in the age we live in now where anyone can go to, you know, Guitar Center or whatever and pick up a focus right and start to learn FL Studio or Pro Tools or whatever and create a really great sounding record. That wasn't the case 10, 15 years ago. You really had to go out of your way to find a producer and put a song out there like MySpace. I, I think I hired someone to optimize my MySpace account back in the day, but now, mm -hmm. or like even create a MySpace. And now it's like anyone can just whip out Instagram or Facebook and create a profile and upload music and you're golden. So there's just a lot, I don't want to call it saturation, but yes, it is very saturated is. to create music because and I, I don't mean this to like discredit people trying to pick up a new hobby or a new you know creative thing uh but everyone and their mom is a producer nowadays and everyone and their mom <laughs> is a musician you know and it's just across the board like even with, even with like photography i i was actually a manager at best buy for a while and um like the amount of people that came in like yeah i, I want to start a photography business but i have no background in photography like is this camera good and I, I'm stoked that a lot of people are picking up these new creative endeavors but that definitely does create more competition so you can't just again going back to music like if I have good music the people will come good music won't really get you that far nowadays you really have to execute it in a proficient manner which I learned the hard way after burning thousands of dollars by recording with like the top producers and then spending little to nothing in the marketing space. So um, I was in a band from 2013 to 2015. And again, thousands of dollars spent with all of these flashy people. And the project went nowhere because I didn't apply any marketing tactics at all. So after being really discouraged, I was like, okay, what, what's missing? There's a billion bands out there. There's a billion artists out there, but what can I do differently? And that's where I discovered marketing and you know just digital marketing across the board by utilizing facebook and instagram ads and, and things of that sort so um fast forward to now 
I, that's kind of what I dedicate my, my time and life to, just helping out other artists understand the world that is marketing and how they can apply it, you know, through their, their music endeavors. Right. Okay. Excellent. We're definitely on very similar paths because like a while ago, like I did an album, took me two years. Uh, I spent $2,000 on mixing and mastering, you know, getting a professional studio. And like my thought process was, you know, I'm going to put it out and it's going to be so good that it'll just go viral because all my friends will spread it around somehow some way the internet will pick it up like I was wrong and what's even weird too is I knew I was wrong but I wanted to do it anyway because I wanted to feel I don't know why bro I wanted to feel the pain of losing that two grand to teach myself a lesson and it was the same lesson you learned marketing so talk to me about like there's so many different aspects of marketing what what are like I don't know what are the pieces of, of marketing that you're really into um, I think a, a big one is just understanding that not everyone, like you were saying, it, it's not just going to go viral just because like there, there has to be a marketing channel involved, whether that is being shared by an influencer or someone through a couple of dollars of ad spend towards a video that you scrolled past on Instagram in order to give it another boost. Um, so I think the, the missing link to a lot of artists, whether they're established or developing is audience retention. And going back to like my roots, that that's what I learned again the hard way because normally when you go into like boost an Instagram post or a Facebook post, um, you're usually reaching people who have never heard of you or what I like to call cold audiences, which is great. Um, but then what? You know, and, and that's probably my my favorite question to ask a lot of the record labels and independent artists that I work with is okay, uh, we're putting out this song. And then what, like, put yourself in the perspective of fans' shoes. They're going to be scrolling through their Facebook feed or Instagram feed or whatever. They're going to see a music video or a stream video, whatever creative app that you have. It doesn't really matter. But then what? They're just going to forget about you. What if they didn't like your page on Facebook? What if they didn't follow you on Instagram? Or what if they didn't save your song to Spotify? Like, what is the follow-up to that in the event that these people do not do that? Because odds are when you throw an ad, you'll probably reach, you know, just for the sake of argument, let's say a thousand people. What percentage of those people realistically do you think actually click to your landing page or click to your profile or whatever it may be? But then the percentage of people that did not, like, what are you going to do with them? Just right. forget about them. Try to, you know, boost another post and see what other thousand people you can reach and which one of them are going to care enough. So again, with, with audience retention being the missing link, those people are warm. They've, they've already been warmed up to the idea <clears throat> of who you are, excuse me. So again, if I subconsciously see, you know, your face on a social media post or from a music video, and then a couple of days later, I see your face again, and you're telling me like, hey, thanks for checking out my song the other day. Don't forget to follow me on Spotify. Subconsciously, I'm going to say, okay, yeah, I just saw this video. What the heck? I didn't follow them on Spotify. Like maybe I should because they, they're everywhere now. And um, the biggest example I like to use is like when you, when you go to like Nike.com and then you, you don't buy anything or if you add something to your cart, a couple of days later, you'll probably see another advertisement from Nike saying, hey, like you forgot this in your cart. Here's 20% off or hey, uh, thanks for buying this stuff a couple months ago. We have more new ones that you may more than likely click on because they know who you are they know what you just bought a couple months back so here's another thing that's very similar so it, it's not it's not a coincidence when you see advertisements and i feel like for musicians they've experienced that but never but never have really experienced that through music and that again that's you know going back to my roots that's kind of what helped my project at the time uh, chart on Billboard with our debut album, even though Drake dropped Scorpion out of nowhere. That really pissed me off, by the way. Um, we were like, okay, no one's releasing anything on this day. We have it clean. You know, we're good. No competition. Then I wake up and a bunch of my buddies are texting me like, yo, Drake just dropped an album out of nowhere. This sucks. I'm like, oh yeah, this does suck, but whatever. We have a pretty hefty marketing budget and we have a, you know, marketing funnel in place or whatever. Um, you know, and, and fast forward, after the first week, we, we did end up charting Billboard on a couple of different charts, such as Heat Seekers, Alternative Rock, and 
we barely made it to the top 200 records of that week, which is pretty cool too. Wait, so, okay, what, what's the name of the band? Uh, I was in a band called Dwellings, um, which is an alternative progressive rock band um, out here out of Minnesota, California. They actually relocated to Sacramento. Um, I was in that band from 2016 up until August of last year, just because I found out very quickly that touring was not for me. And I found out what their touring schedule was supposed to look like this year. And I was like, uh, you know what? I don't really feel like being gone from away from home for three fourths of the year. So right. might as well just do my marketing stuff. So um, it, it was kind of a win win because now I'm doing stuff like this with you, you know? Right. Is is the one of the albums called Lavender Town? Correct. Yes. All right. I'm going to check that out. I'm super pumped to hear this. Okay. So, okay. So I'm really curious now, you know, it's not every day that I get to interview somebody who's really been in that kind of experience where they've been to that level of success and been kind of in the industry. Can, can like, when you said you had a marketing funnel, what was mm -hmm. it? Um, it was uh, kind of that missing link I was talking about the audience retention because again I could have pumped in you know five hundred dollars to reach thousands of people you know whatever um, but then what I did was also re-engage with those people so kind of the same thing I ask a lot of these record labels and independent artists that I work with is like okay we're gonna put out a music video what happens next after these people experience this music video whether it's you know the face of the band or whatever if you're a singer songwriter you just create a 15 second video of you thanking people who watch that video and target those people that watch that video with you just giving a more direct um i like to call it like a more direct call to action you know clip so that they can then convert whatever convert is and for us at the time it was to get people to actually purchase the record through our shopify store or whatever and also get people to sign up for an email list or just like a little clip of us thanking them uh, to actually check out the album. Um, a, a big part of it had to do with the marketing side of things as well as some press support, but we didn't get a whole lot of press for the record, unfortunately. But even still in retrospect, had we not gotten press or PR, we could have lived without it. And especially now, like I, not to bash PR as a, industry in itself but i i don't really see people nowadays especially going out of their way to read an article about someone they've never heard of right and that's a really big thing that i like to talk about with artists and immediately they tell me like oh okay so I'm like fuck pr i shouldn't get pr right i'm like no that it still has its place and what i mean by this is if you strategically implement it with your marketing funnel again going back to the prospective fan that watched your music video a couple weeks later let's say you retarget that same person with a with an interview that you had with you know billboard or whatever that to you know the the prospective fan whether they really liked you or didn't they're gonna think in their mind like oh what the hell like i just saw this advertisement the other day and now they're on billboard like whoa they must be legit let me check them out now so if you know PR doesn't necessarily work for cold audiences, at least in my experience. It serves as like a, a supplemental piece of content to the overall marketing strategy. And it doesn't have to be a, you know, a write-up from Billboard or whatever. It can even just be a, you know, like a, a DIY interview, like top five, top five facts you don't know about, you know, me as an artist or whatever, and just mm -hmm. retarget those people that watch your video because Again, you're just elaborating on your story as an artist and giving people an, an inside look as to who you really are. Because I, I love to use the example of just content creators in general, whether it's, you know, a, a really a pro Twitch streamer, you know, that, that streams video games. Like there's thousands of, you know, people streaming Fortnite or whatever, but why do people gravitate towards that one streamer or that, or that handful of people? Um, it's because they they feel some sort of sentiment towards that you know content creator's personality, mm -hmm. or they feel like they connect with them on a different level because everyone's playing the same game, which you can say the same thing about music. Everyone's playing the same game, which is music. But what sets you apart from you know the guy over there? 
you're actually the one that's letting people know who you are. You're actually putting yourself out there, which that kind of segues into what I believe is the success of TikTok because you are actually putting yourself out there. You're giving people an inside look on your personal life or just showing people what is true rather than when you go on the Facebooks and the Twitters, like it's all of these, you know, like, hey, look what I have or hey, look at this perfect captured moment. Whereas, you know, TikTok is more like in the moment stuff, real time, like really quick, like give me more, give me more, you know? So. Right. Um, okay. So what I want to know, that's a lot of good stuff, by the way. I, what I really like too that I extracted from you is that you've talked, you talked a lot about kind of um, the perspective of the fan in a way and like to think about your marketing from that perspective, which I think is great because I think a lot of artists don't think of that. But what I really want to know is, okay, walk me through maybe a bird's eye view, let's say you were to build, let's say you were to build a marketing campaign for an artist. Okay. Mm. My, my audience is generally rappers. So let's just say it's a rapper, not a band. Um, let, um, let's say their objective is they're putting out a project, an album, 10 songs. Mm. Okay. What, what do you, what would your marketing strategy be? You know, if somebody said, Hey, um, you know, hey, I want to figure out the best way to get the most out of this album. Um, you know, I'm willing to do merchandise. Obviously, I want some way to monetize. I want my streams to go up. I want to build an email list. Like, I want to, I want to own some traffic. So, what, what, what do you think? Like, what are, what, what would you do? What would your plan of attack be for marketing an album for like an independent rapper? Yeah. Um, so the, the biggest thing when tackling a project is figuring out who you appeal to and what the artist or me, myself as a marketer might think is the target demographic may not always be the case. And, uh, mm. the, the biggest example I, I see of this is like when you ask any rapper, singer, songwriter, whatever, when you ask them like, okay, like, you know, who would like your music? Like, who do you appeal to? The artists, more often than not that they list off are artists that the specific, you know, the, the rapper looks up to or is influenced by. And I think that honestly is a, another thing to pay attention to because more often than not, what you may think is your target audience is just that it's just an influence. It's not really people that will listen to you. And I've found that to be true, you know, with the artists that I've worked with, and whenever I ask them, like, hey, like, who do you appeal to? They say, you know, Travis Scott. But then I listen to their music and it sounds nothing like Travis Scott. And I'm like, right. okay, why would a Travis Scott fan listen to this? And then, you know, their response is like, oh, because, you know, like, he's, a, he's a big influence on me. Mm -hmm. And that I feel is dangerous because that is what discourages musicians from actually, you know, trusting marketing. Because if, they think that their target demographic is Travis Scott or whatever, and they go in to, you know, boost the post or create an ad for those particular, you know, that particular target demographic, the results are probably not going to be that great because they in fact don't appeal to Travis Scott fans. That's just the right. point. So really paying attention. Oh shit. Sorry. Give me a second. Sorry. If you could just, um, yeah. So like if, you know, when they think that they sound like Travis Scott, um but they don't it, it's kind of you you have to take a look at it from a marketing perspective and really understand who you're trying to market to so again the the whole battle between like influence versus target demographic is an ongoing thing and the way to reassure yourself if that's working or not is looking at your social media metrics and analytics and uh, that's probably my favorite part to do when it comes to advertising. Because when you're creating an ad, um, typically you can plug in a bunch of interests, right? So if you think you sound like Travis Scott, Drake, Logic, whatever, you can plug them all into the same ad set. But typically what I do, and you know, you can use the back end of Facebook's analytics to you know, double check this, is see if they actually overlap or not. So if they actually appear to, you know, like, let's say you want to target Logic fans and Travis Scott fans, usually they're 
different, or you can see what percentage of those uh, target demographics actually overlap. And if they don't overlap, then they're different. But if they do overlap, then they're probably relatively the same. So then it would be safe to plug them into the same ad set. But for example, if those two demographics don't overlap at all, why would you put them in the same ad set? Because they're entirely different. So if your ad is doing good or bad, you're not going to really know why. You're not going to know if it's Travis Scott or if it's Logic that's you know making your ads perform good or bad. Um, so really understanding who your target demographic, I feel, is like the the biggest part of marketing, and that's honestly the part that takes the longest. And I, I call it split testing, like testing out different target demographics, testing out different ad creatives, which ad creatives are like different parts of the song or even different songs entirely because I've found out you know like let's say you know for a fact you do appeal to Travis Scott fans but then the first ad you put out doesn't do that well if you change up your targeting really quickly like let's say you're like okay this isn't working let me try a different artist what if that was your target audience but it was just that specific you know part of the song that you put in front of that target demographic just wasn't resonating with them why not try a different song or try out a different part of the song before, you know, starting from scratch, so to say, because for all you know, that could have been your target demographic, but you wouldn't have known because you changed it way too soon. So um, that's usually how I approach a, you know, a marketing campaign for, let's say a 10 song record and just building out a timeline because project management is key when it comes to releasing, you know, whether it's a single or an album and knowing when you have to do things like, for example, I, I see a lot of artists do the mistake of going on United Masters or whatever and just uploading their song and kind of playing Russian roulette and saying, okay, when, what, when's the soonest I can, you know, put this out. Whereas if, if you were strategic about, okay, I'm going to release this song six weeks from now. This gives me two weeks to pitch two different independent playlists. And then on week four, I can follow up with them if they didn't respond to me through email, et cetera, et cetera. So making sure that you're actually planning your release in a timely manner and getting a lot of these tasks done is very important to the whole operation. Because if you don't go in with a plan, then you can't really expect good results from it, if that makes sense. Yeah, it so, does. So um, doing things in a timely manner, figuring out, and again, you know, just to recap that whole thing, find your target audience and then plan accordingly to what you actually want to release and it'll actually go well. Okay. Very interesting. So you're definitely big on the whole like paid ads thing. I mean, um, what can you say about like, like do you have experience like with email marketing at all or anything like that? What's your, what's mm -hmm. like talk about email marketing and cause I think, okay, where I, where I like, so I'm an artist, but I'm also a producer. And so tiny bit of backstory about me, like I'm now more focused on being a producer only because I'm like really focused on earning a living and like making money. And I can see that it was easier for me to wrap my head around that as a producer than an artist. So um, things like building an email list are easier for me to understand as a producer, because all I have to do is offer some free beats in exchange for their email and I build a list and I've been doing that and it's been working. But it's been working really well and it's awesome. But like talk about like as an artist, right? Like I still haven't wrapped my head around completely. Like how do I build an email list as an artist? Like what's a lead magnet? First of all, what is a lead magnet for people who don't know? And then second of all, what would be an example of a lead magnet? What would be the process? That's really what I want to know. What's the process of getting someone cold to just sign up for your email list, let alone buy anything? Yeah, um, you, well, first of all, a lead magnet for, for those who aren't super familiar is basically you know, a way to generate leads and the lead can be someone that signs up for your email list, uh, someone that signs up for your text message list, et cetera, et cetera. And I think the most popular form of a lead magnet, which I mean, in my opinion, really isn't a lead, it's just doing a huge ask of someone with nothing in return, uh, but it's a, a pre-save campaign. And most artists don't really understand that they already are building an email list more often than not, especially if they use like DistroKid. Like that thing is phenomenal because it keeps track of all of those users' emails in the back end of it. 
but when you do a a pre-save campaign usually you know the only benefit is again the the fan will get it added to their library the day of release but what can you do or what can you give in exchange for a pre-save which typically it's you know early access of the song uh, behind the scenes outlook on the song as well and it doesn't have to be a formal pre-save campaign through like you know show.co or feature fm or whatever you can do it through there um, but to answer your question like to build an email list it would be something as simple as like hey sign up for our you know email club and you'll get our songs 24 hours before anyone else like that is a big enough lead magnet for most people and i've seen it work um just the thing is like whenever i talk about email lists with artists they're like yeah no one reads email or whatever but if you think about it like from a marketing perspective and i'm sure you can you know vouch for this too that's probably yeah. like the the best method of communication for your business and again your music yeah. is a business so why wouldn't you do that you know like right. it's it's crazy like yeah, i think I mean, that's a key driver for my you know business as well to attest to it you know to vouch for it i mean a couple of things number one even today 80 percent of revenue generated online comes from emails number two um you really like you have to somehow own the traffic i'm, I'm not going to get into the i've talked about this from russell brunson like traffic you control traffic you earn traffic you own like you have to own and I don't want to break that down again, I've broken it down a million times, but like traffic that you, you own, you have to have some kind of traffic you own. And, um, you know, a good story is, um, a mentor of mine named Legion beats. He obviously has an email list, but he had a Facebook messenger list that was killing it. Right. For people who don't know, you can use Facebook messenger. It's very attractive because the numbers that you get, like the amount of percentage of people opening messenger and, the delivery and the click through rate, it's, it's insane compared to email. So a lot of people go, Oh, I'd rather use that. Problem is you don't own it. Facebook still owns that. That's still Mark Zuckerberg's list. So like my mentor Gabe was in the middle of this big launch and he was delivering content via email and messenger. It was like 70,000 people and oh, wow. they just shut him down mid launch um, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Luckily they were all on email all those people, but it was mid launch. It was like in the middle of the week. And he was like, Oh my God, like we got to hustle and bustle and scramble to like fix this. And he's just like, you got to build an email list. Cause like that kind of stuff doesn't happen. I don't think unless you're really like abusing your emails and like, you know, yeah, like emails aren't as, you know, attractive and they're like, you know, the, 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 the conversion rates not as good as Facebook messenger, but you own it. Like you really don't right. own Facebook Messenger. So, you know, and, and the other thing too, sorry, I'm kind of rambling, but the other thing too is, I mean, how many rappers do you know that think they have a following because they have an Instagram following when you and I both know, well, you don't really like, because Instagram could just change the algorithm and now your whole career is screwed. Like, that's right. why I'm even talking about this today with, with you, because I know like, yeah, you need to have a big following on social, but we haven't even, I don't even want to cover that because like we all already knew that like the next debt for anyone listening is like, you've got to build an email list. Like you've got to do it. 100%. So I want to, I want to ask you something too. I don't know if this is something that you're like familiar with, but like, so one of the problems that I've had personally as a music producer, right? Getting emails, easy. Five free beats, 15 free beats. I did a little video. It's easy to get emails. Where I'm starting to like get a little tiny bit better, but that's really screwing me is like, I'm really bad at emails. Like my copywriting is really trash. And like, um, you know, I actually kind of wanted to ask you this anyway. Like I put out tons of content, podcast every day, two to four YouTube videos a week, Instagram every day, freaking, yeah, like a bunch of those things. So like I have this email list and like, mm. obviously I want to sell to them, but I also want to deliver all of this content. You know, what's your experience with like emailing people who are already on your list? Like after you've built your list, like do you have experience with like doing that kind of stuff? Yeah, um, I think a big part of that would be like automation, um, which, you know, that, that just takes a lot of consistent, you know, testing and most of the email providers, whether it's like MailChimp, ConvertKit, there's a billion of them have automation built into it. 
And once you find like a email chain that like works, um, then you can implement automation and, and nurturing, which it kind of ties back to the first point we talked about in general, just audience retention. Like you can build an email list for the free stuff in exchange, but then like, again, what's next? <laughs> It, right. it all it all starts and ends with that question for me and um you know what i started doing and i, I encourage you to do this too as a producer like any um, like you have a facebook right like you're in facebook groups and stuff yeah um whenever people make a post like asking a question and you come up with like a badass answer turn that into an email like that you can send out to your subscribers mm. like i started doing that dude and like my notes are filled with tons of different content that I can push out to my subscribers. I haven't done that yet. Um, but wow, I, that's I such have a, a feeling like, yeah, because people ask all the time, like, hey, like, how do I get, you know, beats or what is licensing? And then if you break it down in your own words with a quick comment, for one, you're being conversational, which I found that emails like that work best, uh, com being conversational, and then uh, using that towards, you know, whatever your, your niche is. And, you know, the another big question you know, how do you apply this as like a musician? It's like, talk about yourself. Because again, if you think of, you know, the Drake's, the Travis Scott's and the weekends of the world, like they're very secretive or when you look at their Instagram, it's just, you know, them posing like this and then it's just like an emoji. And it's like, okay, that doesn't tell me who they are. And it works for them because they're already established. For a developing artist, the whole cool guy, I'm better than you persona never works. That just comes off as you being a try hard or you being you know a, a know-it-all or whatever so um again going back to the example of these content creators such as you know the pro twitch streamers like they're tweeting all the time they're you know you're, you're actually having a conversation with them when you're watching their live stream you're seeing the little quirky habits that they have when they get shot or whatever or you know the whatever jokes and you you develop like a you know, inside joke with the person that you're watching all the time. And it's like, you're getting to know that person. And that's what just keeps you coming back and tuning into that live stream. And I feel like that's the thing that the music industry across the board just has not figured out, which thankfully mm -hmm. most of the artists that I've been working with have figured that out. Um, and just, you know, overlapping everything or just becoming a content king at the end of the day, like whether it's just a Instagram story a day, like if you can commit to that, cool. Like you're just providing something else that is quote unquote a lead magnet to convert to your music, you know? Right, right, right. That's um, real talk. I mean, that's such a big gem, bro. I love that you shared that. Like going into Facebook groups, responding to comments or responding to questions, taking that and using it. And I, it really what that got me thinking was using that for a YouTube video, a podcast, and an email. Really is now, mm -hmm. you know, what you've got me thinking about too. And um, even interacting with that individual person as well. Um, is, is, is great, man. That's so, and now, now that even gets me thinking, like I've gone into Reddit a little bit, which I think is super overlooked because people are just majorly passionate about whatever they're in that group for. And like, you can get like so many great questions, um, out of that, you know, I, I'm curious about something too. This will be kind of the last thing that we'll wrap it up. Like as a music producer, I have really been more geared as a value provider service provider, question answerer, like, but when I was a rapper, I wasn't. When I was like an artist, mm. it was all like me and my art. I'm an artist, come watch my art, right? And it like bothered me. It bothered me because I was like, I don't even like this. Like, I don't like the feeling I get from like, I guess I'm entertaining people, but I don't know, dude, it's just very like, I got, I got really jaded because I was like, I don't even want to like, I don't like that perception of like, you just need to come watch me. I would rather give you value anyways, but maybe you can shed some light on like, are there ways that like artists can provide value to their audience in a way, maybe beyond the music? I think a lot of it has to do where music stems from in general. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't really know music history because I dropped out of college two days in, but I think a lot of music was political back in the day. Um, and really touched on, you know, the whole, even how you said like entertainment, like you are providing a, a distraction essentially um, to what is going on in the world. And 
even outside of just the music that you're putting out there, if, you know, the lyrics actually resonate with people. And this is for people who write, like, love songs and stuff, not, like, you know, what traditional rap is about, you know, funny weed, bitches, whatever. Sure. Um, if you can relate to that, then cool, yeah. Like, or if people can connect with that on a different level, that's awesome, too. But, again, usually why people are drawn to music is just that, like, being entertained themselves. And I think entertainment is valuable. I think, you know, when you just go onto your phone, like that's all you have, entertainment. Like Apple's a huge company. What value do they provide? Entertainment, but a way to connect with others. And I think even Facebook's, you know, message, like overarching message is like connecting those with matter, connecting with those that matter the most or just bringing people closer together. And that is what music is at the end of the day. It's just a way to connect with other people. And it's usually why people would go to shows when shows were a thing before COVID. Um, just it's like a safe space where there's just a bunch of like-minded people that are there to, you know, enjoy the same thing at the same time. So I don't know if I answered your question, but I think it that's, does. That's my perception on it. Yeah, big time. No, I think it does. I think to, you know, I think to add to it too, like um, I've been learning through just like talking to a lot of artists that a lot of artists have some kind of passion or emotional connection to something other than music like like some some artists i've talked to um used to struggle with like anxiety and depression and mental health and so they're really passionate about helping people with that and so like they make great music and they also have connected that part of their life and said to their fans in a way you know i want to help you with this also i want to bring that and I think that helps people get connected to the artists themselves anyways um and so I think that's one thing for anyone listening that like you can take away from this is like you can be more than just music you should be more I think you should be more than just music you should be music you should make great music but there's billions of great songs and we kind of don't need like your song so like what is it about you that's what I always talk about like what is it about you as an artist that separates yourself um and it's kind of like injecting that part of your personality and your passion into your music and your brand, you know? Right, exactly. And I mean, whether it is, you know, you being a mental health advocate or, you know, a, a fashionista, I like to say it, um, like what, what else are you bringing to the table other than just music? Because again, there's a bunch of people playing the same game. How, how are you standing out? So, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, man, well, look, I, I you know, I, I want to respect your time. We're just about around the time um, that we've got, but, you know, tell people like, where's the best place, um, that they can get in contact with you if they want to learn more about what you got going on. Yeah. Um, so the biggest thing is, you know, my website, which is oddly simple dot X, Y, Z. Um, it's simple without any, and, um, through there, you can, you know, find the links to our social media, which is, you know, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. And, you know, whether you want to work with me directly or if you want to learn how to apply the same, you know, fundamentals that I do with my clients, um, we do have our academy, which is just a monthly subscription, which shows you, you know, different videos on how to set up, you know, Facebook and Instagram ads the proper way. Or, you know, you can inquire about us managing the advertisements for you directly, just whatever kind of person you are. If you want to know how to do it, cool, I can teach you. If you just want it done for you, cool, we do that too, you know. So. Nice. I'm on the website right now. I'm actually really pumped about this, bro. I'm actually really, I didn't even realize you had like all this going on. Like I'm glad because I want to look into some of your services. Um, Cause I want to start trying to figure out how to grow on Spotify and just see what can happen. So I'm definitely going to check you guys out and we'll have to talk further, um, further about this. I'm pretty pumped about this. It's pretty cool. It's a good website, really good website. Huh? Sweet, man. Thanks, man. Well, dude, no, thank, thank you so much for your time today. I'm pumped because I've, you know, been avidly watching your videos on TikTok for like a month. So it's cool to actually get to talk to you now in person. It's great. So, um, yeah, yeah, thank you guys. I saved thank just for you. Oh, uh, my God. I see. Yeah, it looks like you got a haircut, too, man. It looks good. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, bro. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, you know, definitely go check out, um, check out everything that Anthony's got going on everything especially the tiktoks are great i love them a lot so thank you guys so much for listening um subscribe to the podcast leave a rating and review share this with a friend i guarantee you have a friend who's a rapper a musician that will get value from this episode don't hold it to yourself share it with somebody we'll talk to you again soon all right anthony thank you so much bro i'm gonna let you go i know you got to get going
So I'll let you go. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right. See you. Bye.